Good day, this is Prophetess Wendy. Thank you so much for joining me. To my subscribers, I'd like to thank you so much. For those that are joining us for the first time, you're more than welcome. This is the true prophet, the, the prophetess of the Lord, you know. I prophesy according to what the Holy Spirit gives me to tell you for the day. I don't speak my mind, hallelujah. Because maybe sometimes if I can give you peace of my mind, you might not want to come back to this channel anymore. But I only speak what the Spirit has to say to you through me, through my mouth. I'm just a mouthpiece, a vast for this day for you to listen to. So anyway, as we begin, it's a very, very nice topic. You know, it comes as a form, it comes as a form of a question to say that prophet has, what makes marriage to work? What makes marriage to work? Hallelujah. Sometimes you are not qualified, the prophetess. No, we need an elderly person to come and speak to us. Can I tell you something? The Bible says, greater is he that is on the inside of me than the one that is in the world. When you are listening to me, don't look at this face and say, ah, she's still a child. She doesn't know anything. She has never been through anything. Anyway, you're fortunate enough to be married to a pastor. Can I tell you something? My husband is not an angel. He's a human being. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we're dating, uh, when we're dating, we're in courtship. We used to share a lot of scriptures. Everything was just spiritual. Hallelujah. When you call, sometimes I'll start by saying, instead of hello, I'll say amen. That's how spiritual our relationship was. But when we got married, I began to understand something because I've learned something. The language begins to change altogether. You know, during the time when you're dating, you're too spiritual. When you send the message, you know, I, this is the truth. My husband can testify my husband can confirm to say whenever we send each other messages when we're dating it was a scripture you know scripture to scripture we used to speak about the word of god you know then this other time my husband says to me uh, uh, will you marry me hallelujah when he pop up that question to say will you marry me i want to make you my wife hey we are good that day well, now you're out of order we were doing well, speaking of holy scriptures. All of a sudden, you want me to be your wife. Is there something you're looking for? Is there something that you want now? <laughs> and my husband says, no, we cannot just be talking of scriptures. We need to discuss our future plans here. Yeah, we cannot be every time when we come together. What is the Lord saying, Sister Wendy? What did God say? No, we need to discuss of where we are going, our future. I'm telling you that day I told him, if you're going to speak your things, if you're going to talk about uh, uh, us and different things either than the scriptures, I'm going to dump you. Hallelujah. The uh, pastor says, no, I get we're trying to build a family of our own here. We need to speak of our holy scriptures. You know, in our relationship, there was no touchy-touchy there. I remember this other time, you know, he tried to touch me. I was like, I rebuke the devil. The devil that is controlling you now, I wish you could have seen the way I jumped there. Hey, 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 courtship was nice for us. So what am I saying? I'm not married to a supernatural being. I'm married to a human being. When I got married, I realized, oh, there are bills to pay. Okay, there are things like what, what. Oh, we go through a lot as a couple. Oh, okay. Sometimes we, 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 we get into debt. My husband and I, you know, have been married for 17 years. You know, the people are talking about us. You and a husband are working. Hey, we're in debt. We're in debt with my husband. Trying to make the ministry work. Trying to make our lives work. Trying to get things right. You know, sometimes there are things that don't get right as a couple. But uh, one thing that has kept us together, we loved each other. One thing that I can tell you for sure, we are an open book. If you can sit with my husband, me not being there, the things that will tell you is most of the things that I will also tell you. Even if I don't say it 100% the way I'll put it, but that's how I'm going to put it. So what am I saying? Uh, it's always good to try and get to know what really works for you as a couple. Why? Because more, many couples that say, you know what, my, I feel like my marriage is not working. Uh, uh, people like to, to, to speak of communication, to say communication is key, but it depends. People can be communicating every day, but hating one another, fighting every day. There's no peace there. There's no joy, but people are communicating. But this is a different type of communication altogether. You find that, hey, people are hating one another. They are talking. Even when they're inside the car, they're talking, but you find that they are quarreling in the process. So one thing I can tell you for sure that has helped me over the years Things that makes marriage to work, it comes back to the originator of marriage, and that is God. 
I cannot tell you anything either than God. Many a times when we get married, we feel like we can do it on our own. We don't need God. And why do we feel like we don't need God? Is because God is invisible. But the fact that he's invisible, it doesn't mean that he's not there. He's there. God knows your husband. God knows your wife. He knows all of us. So what am I saying? Sometimes we tend to forget about God. So what about people who are not in the church and they've been married for so many years, but their marriage seems to be working? I'm going to speak about myself as a Christian. I'm not going to speak for those people. Those ones that will have their channel, they will have their time to speak of on how they did it and how they do it. But for now, I'm going to speak for myself and what works for me. For me, I always come back to the source, the source of the originator of marriage. When you read the book of Genesis, God says it is not good for a man to be alone. Hallelujah. It is not good for a man to be alone. You know, when you read the book of Malachi, God says, I hate divorce. I hate divorce. If there's one thing that God wants, whenever we get married, God wants us to stay together in marriage, grow together. You know, that's when, when he speaks of the kingdom of God, he says, Christ is the groom. He shall come to take back the church of God as the bride. So what am I saying? God loves marriage. I don't know like what. But there are challenges that we are faced with in marriage that makes our marriages not to work. First of all, I would like to say this. Friendship in marriage is very, very important. It's very, very important. If I can be honest with you, if they had to ask me, even when I'm dead, my kids know this, my husband is my best friend. He is my best friend. You know, he is my friend. We talk about everything. You know, when I was looking at Sarah and Abraham, I saw their friendship, that they had an open relationship where they will talk about everything. They will advise one another. Sarah will be submissive to Abraham. There will be times when Abraham will say, Sarah, please cook for these friends of mine. You remember during that time, the hottest day of the day when those two angels came to announce that uh, Sarah is going to conceive. And the Bible says, when angel comes to earth, they take an earthly form. They look like human beings, but they were angels. That's why God says you need to be welcoming in your homes because one of the good days you could be welcoming angels. So the Bible says, Abraham says to her, cook something. You know, she did not say no. Why must I cook for people that I don't know? You know, those are the things that makes people to fight when you disagree on everything. In marriage, I, I understand one thing over the years. It's good to agree on certain things because there are times when a man will come and tell you things that you don't understand as a woman. But as a woman, it does not mean that if you don't understand, it must not be done. Hallelujah. The man can ask you to say, it's your turn to go and take a loan. And you're thinking, Ish, if I go take a loan, it means I'll be in debt. It means that they'll be taking this particular amount from me. But you know, the moment you don't do it, the family is going to collapse. The whole family depends on you financially for some of the things to be done in the family. Or sometimes they tell you, you are the one to be fixing the car for this month. And even that you did not plan for that, you did not prepare for that. But as a woman, because we are submissive, we have to look at the situation. Why is he asking me to do this? Is it because he's failing? Is it because it can't be done? Anyway, your money is his money. So Mara, there are times when a man we request you to do something which you do not understand as a woman. Those are the things that makes us to quarrel and to have our differences. Sometimes you find that it's different things. There are different things that makes people to fight and quarrel in marriage. I cannot mention everything. But I can say disagree to end up agreeing, you know. Dispute that can be resolved in marriage, can be avoided. There are things that can be avoided, you know. When you know, once I speak like this, my husband is going to go on a high note when your husband is on a high note always come down to the lower note why because those are the things that destroy marriages but what makes marriage to work i can give you thousands of advice for me is to pray and ask the lord to give me guidance to guide me in my marriage you know sometimes you need the holy spirit to ask the holy spirit to guide you as a woman don't say i'm educated i know how things should be done i've read a lot of different books of good women it's good to read books but it's always good to come down to the level of the holy spirit and say that holy spirit i don't know how to make my marriage work because marriages are not the same i can tell you here we pray only to find that in your marriage you believe in ancestral worship or husband believe in ancestral worship you find that there's already a clash there is uh, uh, oil and water there and it cannot mix so what am i saying you need to know what works for you so as a family 
For me, I will say it is when I invite God and say that God guide us, help us, help me to maintain my joy. I always invite God to say that God help me keep my mind together, Lord. Help me not to lose it. Help me to love this man. Even to love, it's not an easy thing. You cannot do it on your own. You need God to help you to love the next person. Because there will be times when they will do things and you feel like, ah, now I feel like I've run out of love. I no longer have love for this person anymore. Oh, I feel like we've been been with this person for too long now. I'm relaxed. So what am I saying? For me, prayer always works for me. I always pray and say that God teach me to be a good wife to this man. Teach me to be a good woman. Teach me, Father, to be a loving woman, to be a caring woman, to be an understanding woman. I ask the Holy Spirit, you know, they said, Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as offense. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the guider. So if the Holy Spirit can guide you, I don't think you will miss the point, you know. The Holy Spirit, one, that man that I said, this man, this man is a harsh man. I'm telling you, you will be able to stay with that man because the Holy Spirit will teach you on how to respond, on how to answer that particular person because because he knows the particular person that you're married to. So it's always good to seek advice from God. No, it's not everything that you must ask God and spiritualize everything. When you've got a problem, you just have a problem. How do you resolve it? For me, I always go back to the scriptures. You know, God will say forgive and he will tell you how many times to forgive. Meaning there will be times when there will be times when forgiveness is required in marriage. But God will tell you, forgive as many times as you can and move on after forgiving. Hallelujah. It will tell you, move on after forgiving. And okay, what if there's the third person in that relationship? How do you deal with it? You go back to the book of Genesis. You check how Sarah dealt with Hagar. You know, you, you check how, how, how was things happening there. For me, I always go back to the Bible and refer to say, oh, I must not call these young girls and say, stay away from me. Hey, hallelujah. Some are not even aware that your husband is dating a particular person. Some are not even aware they were told that I'm singing. Some they are told that we are separating. Now as I speak, we are not even staying in the same house. Only to find you are staying in the same house. Some they even they were told your weaknesses. The moment you pick up a phone and say, Ah, it's me. They will tell you things that will shock you to say, There are men when they are dating, they get excited. They tell the girl everything. Then you as my old Magogo, you call and say, Stay away from my man. You want to fight with these children? No. As a woman, I'll say, maintain your dignity. Even when you find SMSs, don't call those women back trying to say, you, did he tell you that he's married to me? They know. <laughs> Some they'll tell you, yes, we know he's married to you. So what? No. So what am I saying? There are ways on how you deal with things. If you find out things like that or you're suspecting that my man could be having an affair, don't jump into conclusion just because of one message that say, please come at 10. I need you. And then uh, oh, I miss you or I'm thinking about you. Now I say, yeah, we're thinking about you. Please, there's a relationship here. No, sometimes you need to sit down, gather information if you're a detective. Just gather information. Then when you find out the information, don't go and address um, the other woman. You know, don't call the other woman. Say, yeah, it's me. It's me. Stay away from my man. No, you talk to your husband. Talk to your husband. I've seen sometimes the mistake that we make as women sometimes when we find our man with another woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many at times I see us, uh, not all, uh, there are those that are wise, you know, there are those that are controlled by emotions because it's it's painful to see your man with another woman. Find that you leave the man aside, you begin to fight with this particular woman, you are fighting, the man is just standing there watching you fighting. And sometimes if you want to fight, hey, hey, you need to check. When you're angry, anger, if anger will drive you to do a lot of things. That's why the Bible says anger does not achieve God's righteous purpose. You'll find that they, they, sometimes they'll beat you to hell. So what am I saying? Sometimes when there is a problem in marriage, don't go and uh, address the third person. Talk to your husband. Talk to your husband. It's always important to talk to your husband. Because many a times when these men are doing crazy things and all other things, they are the one who goes to these women and propose them. Yes, there are women who've got the guards to propose them, but I can say 10%. But 90% of the time, we find that the men are the one that goes out to propose these women. So you cannot find yourself trying to fight with every woman or every message that comes to the fore you want to interrogate. Who's Rebecca now? Why is she calling? You find that you're no longer happy. 
You are no longer happy because you have found out that there are messages directed to your husband to say thank you for paying for the account. You don't even know which account is this one. <laughs> you have not bought me anything. You have not bought me anything since you married me. But now you are busy paying for somebody's account. And then you find that it has nothing to do with what you are thinking. So what am I saying? Whenever there is a challenge in marriage, you sit down, uh, you talk to your husband. There are things that you can avoid, man. There are little things that you can avoid. The Bible says you're only allowed to cheat when you, sorry, to divorce when you've got tangible evidence. This man is cheating. You know, it's cheating. Ah, then the Bible says I you are allowed to leave the man and go and start your own life. But in a point where you say, I want my marriage to work and I want to forgive this man. It means when you say you are forgiving this man, you must not stay in marriage, but still reminding him. You remember? You remember in 2000? In 2000? 2000 when you were dating Delia. Delia. And then now things of 2000. Now it's 2021. We're still going back to 2000. Yeah, 2000. Why? Because you're still hurt, you're still emotional over the things that you saw over the years. So what am I saying? When you say that I want to make this marriage to work, I want to stay with this marriage, I know that this man has made his own mistakes, but regardless of his mistakes, I want this marriage to work. People who want marriages to work, I'm telling you, they try their best to fix all the mistakes that they find in a relationship. They try their level backs to, to cover up some of the mess in the marriage. They clean up all the mess. So if you are saying, I want to stay in this marriage, I want to forgive my husband and just build a family with him because he's human who sometimes make mistakes. So when you are saying you're forgiving him, don't keep on reminding him of what he did because that does not build up his spirit. It crushes his spirit to be reminded of his past mistake. I know there are men who keep on repeating one and the same mistake. Now it has become a habit. Hallelujah. <laughs> now it's something that you see, God, this is a weakness, man. You cannot keep on coming back to apologize for one and the same thing. There must be growth. There must be change. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? When you say that we need to work things out in marriage, um, you need to sit down and say, you know what? I know that my husband does not know how to wash his car. So therefore, since I've got the energy to go out and wash all these both these two cars, I'm going to go outside and do the the, 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 the the washing part of the cars. So what am I saying? There are things that you make peace with to say, eh, this particular person cannot do one, two, three, but nevertheless, let me do it. Those are the things that makes marriages to work. Sometimes you find that, okay, my husband is not good in taking me out. So since it's not good in taking me out, let me be the one to take us out. You know, those are the things that play part and parcel of making the marriage to work. Sometimes you find that your husband does not does not like your family members. Whenever you visit your family members, he stands at the gate and just drop you and rush off, does not even want to spend time with them. You sit down, you say to yourself, I, since he doesn't like to spend time with my family members, I'm not going to do the same to his family members. But what I will do, I will make peace with it. Let me drop me at the gate. Let me drop me at the gate. Let me see my family members. One of the good days, I will not stop to pray for him he might come and sit and have coffee one day so what am i saying those are the things that makes marriages to work but whenever there's a disagreement then you decide we're no longer going to talk to each other now you become enemies in the house when you go to the bedroom the other is facing the other direction the other one is facing the other direction then you know for sure that we are heading towards destruction now why because we don't want the marriage to work we can also want marriage to work but when we get into the bedroom nothing is happening there then when we come out nothing is happening you know in the house there's no fun anymore we're just sitting like a brother and sister there's nothing entertaining in the house you know we are no longer happy hey hey you work on your own happiness you know try fun things that makes you to be happy both of you as a couple so if you want marriages to work there are certain things that you can avoid things that you don't like you can avoid it and tell yourself you know what I'm not going to stand and put my mind on things that does not work. I want to work things out. I want to do things that I love. I want to do things that we both love. I want to compromise, you know. I want to compromise. I want to sacrifice in order to make this marriage to work. Sometimes you sacrifice a lot. A time, friends, everything else. 
just to make sure we make one another happy. Let me find what is it that makes this man happy? What is it that makes this woman happy? Then whatever that makes the both of you to be happy, you come together. 50 plus 50 becomes 100 and that becomes what? Success. So what am I saying? To build a successful marriage, you need to agree on certain things. You need to love one another. You need to compromise. You need to what? To sacrifice, you know. You need to check what is it that works for us. You know, marriages are not the same. They are different. But check what is it that works for us and that will help you in your marriage. For me, I told you, it is God. But for you, what is it that makes your marriage to work? What is it that has been making it to work up until this far? What happened? What broke that bond? What happened to make you two completely different people that cannot see eye to eye? What happened to make you not have anything to say to one another? What what happened that stole your joy? Try and find that. Can we fix it? Can we make it work? Is it a child from outside? Is it the job? Is it my husband not working? There are different things that makes people know to see one another eye to eye. But nevertheless, let me say, try and find that. When did we lose it? You know, because we're doing well. You were running the grace so well, but somewhere, somehow, there is something that has come between the two of you. Sometimes it could be family members, could be friends, it could be jobs, could be whatever, distance relationship. There are so many things that we can mention, but you individually sit down and check. What is it? When did this thing all start? Is it because we moved into a new house or bought, bought, or bought cars? Is it because of children? Then you see how to jiggle it up, how to work it out. To say if, if it's kids that is taking up our time, it's me focusing more on the kids and neglecting my husband. It means let me cut the time that I'm spending with the kids and just spend time with my husband. So there are so many things that you can check, you know. What is it? When did this thing happen? Was it when we moved from home to Pretoria? Was it when we moved from township to the suburb that has made us not to connect anymore? What is it? Is it age? Is it age? Is it sickness? What is it that is making us not to be happy anymore? Because in every marriage, there is something that always come out to make people to be separated. There are people who are married but living like divorced people or living like single people or missing, missing uh, to be single again, but they just want to stay for the sake of the children. So what am I saying? Marriage must not be like that because marriage is built upon two people. It was you and your husband. There were no kids back then. You need to find yourselves in the process because the builder of this marriage is the two of you. Kids can die. You still continue as husband and wife. So what am I saying? We need to know what is it that is making us to be disturbed? What is it that is separating me from my husband. You need to check because it's very, very important and it plays a very, very important role. Is it the devil? Is it witchcraft? You know, we have got a lot of things when things are not working out to see what is it that is making this thing not to work. So whenever you found that problem, that is when you are able to solve the problem. So what am I saying? You need to go back and check what is it that is a stumbling block in this marriage? You know, what is it that is making this car not to move? Does it have a breakdown? Does it have a part that needs to be replaced? If it's a part that needs to re be replaced, make sure you go check Google, find the part that needs to be replaced. So what am I saying? Each and every marriage needs to be revived from time to time. Can I just get married? You sit down, you relax, you can see, man, hi, man, I feel like I'm missing my husband. We no longer talk like we used to. I feel like we're completely two different people. No, your husband is not your enemy. Your husband is your friend. But if you feel like I'm losing that touch, I'm losing that relationship, that friendship that we used to have before, try and find what works for you. Sometimes maybe whenever you do something together. I don't know what is it that you used to do back then that would revive your love, you know. If in the bedroom you're no longer active, make sure that you bring back that spark, that love, that romantic night, you know. Make sure you work on it, you know, as a woman, as a man. Make sure you try your level best to do your best. If it's cooking, you no longer cook because now you're working, you're forever busy. Hey, try and check what is it that I can do. Can I try going back to cooking and please my husband? Found that the man is angry. Whenever he gets home, does not even eat the nanny's food. He just passed, goes to the bedroom, and then he tells you, you know what, I miss your food. I miss one, two, three. Check. Can I go back to cooking for this man and not argue? You know, sometimes we become defensive. I'm so tired. I'm just like you. I'm coming from work. I don't 
have time for that and that. But one thing I can tell you for sure, what makes marriage to work is when you work on the things that are coming to separate the two of you. Work on things. Is it depth? Sometimes when a man is in depth, you find that they change their tone, they're upset. You ask for a small thing, it becomes a big issue. A man with no money, I'm telling you, it's a man that can help you at any given time. Why? Because a man was born to be a provider for the family according to God. You know, he's the head of the family. A man needs to work and take care of his family. But if he's failing in that department, sometimes in his own corner, he that he's depressed. And by him being depressed, it also depresses you as a woman. So you need to find out what is it that is making us, you know, what's making this marriage not to work? Is it us being in debt? And then how do we come out of that? Do we scale down and just try and check how, what to sell? If it's a car, do we take it back and try to scale down to gain more money? Can I start a business to help us in the family? How do I help us? How do I find ourselves in the process? There are so many things that makes people, you know, to feel like my marriage is not working. It's because there are small things that, that, that creeps in that that most into the marriage without you seeing. But at the end of the day, when you open your eyes, you'll say, hey, we had a lot of things here. The things that comes between husband and wife, it could be family members, it could be whatsoever. But there's always something that wants to come and separate the two. So that thing, try and find it. Once you find it on your own or the two of you sitting on the table, what happened to us? You know, we were so happy once. You know, I'm telling you, people who are happy, it's easy for them to go back to happiness again because they know how it feels like to be happy together. You know, we can pray, but sometimes you need to be practical. That's why they say faith without action, that, that faith, it is dead. When you are praying, also do the practical of your own marriage. When I pray and say that I want to be a loving wife, but my husband comes home, I'm frowning. But I want to be a happy wife. No, it doesn't work like that. Even when I see things that I don't like because the fact because of the fact that I've said I want to be a happy wife, whenever he comes home, I must find myself happy, rejoicing, rejoicing, you know, rejoicing by faith. By faith, you rejoice. Even when you are hating on the inside, like right now we are practicing faith. When you are practicing faith, it says it goes with action. When you say that now I'm going to love my husband no matter what, that day it comes home, you know, he bang the table or throw the, 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 the plate of your dish. Uh, you know, it does things that will make you crazy. Don't be crazy for that day. I'm going to be practicing faith. Just take the plate, put it in the sink. Or sometimes you cook, they don't even eat, they pass. Keep on cooking. Keep on cooking. One of the good things to sit down and eat your food. Why? Because the effort that you're putting there in your faith and it's being tested. Sometimes it comes as a form of a test. Find that God is testing in your marriage to show that I'm not your husband, but I'm God. Hallelujah. When it's a test, you just have to have wisdom. Like Jobo said, I know this is God. This cannot be anybody else but God. Uh, so sometimes it's also good to open your eyes. This is the devil trying to ruin my marriage. So... What am I saying? What makes marriages to work is when you're able... They say solve for X. I remember when I was doing meds, solve for X, we, we always had a solution on how to solve it. We will solve it and get the answer at the end of the day. So what am I saying? Even in marriage, you need to try find things that are distracting you in your marriage, things that are not making your marriage to work. Then you work on these things and then you try to move on, try to build your family. You try to ask God to restore what the cocoa worms have eaten, you know. Try to ask God to bring that revival in marriage. No, even in marriage, we need that revival. Love needs to be revived. Mm, the love needs to be on fire. Hallelujah. Need to be lightened up. So in order to make your marriage to work, let me repeat myself one more time. Find what is making you to be distracted in your marriage. Things that are disturbing you. Things that are a problem. There you try to work on it and to solve it. If it's a child from outside, talk to your husband on how he's going to maintain the child and how they're going to build the relationship with the child. How you want things to be done. If it's friends, if it's drinking, try to talk to your husband. 
Hallelujah to drink responsibly. Or is a wife, she's lazy. Try and find out how do you help her in the process. If she's like that, she's not like other women. Don't compare her, but try to compliment her as a husband. Try to show her and find a way. How can I best can I help my wife to be a better person? If she's not educated, invest in her. Maybe it's for her not being educated that is disturbing you in the marriage. You know, when you first get married, say, I can do anything as a man, but only to find that, hey, now it's taking too long for this woman to find a job then what do you do in the process do you help her start her small business do you help her to go back to school whatever that you can do to make your marriage work but as long as you find that problem i know you will be able to solve this the problem is when you deal with something that you don't know but it's not easy to deal with it because you're not even aware in the first place you need god to reveal who was the problem there so anything i wish you all the best it's for me ne? i've been married for 17 years and my intention I'm not going anywhere in this marriage. <laughs> I'm here to stay. I'm speaking by faith. Né? I'm speaking by faith. Don't interview me 50 years later. Say, Didn't you say in the DVD? No, I'm speaking by faith. That's my desire. That's what I want. I want to be buried in this marriage. <laughs> the time when I get out is when that hedge comes to pick me up. So why? Because that is my faith. That's what I told myself. Have faith in yourself. Believe, know where you're going in, the, in your marriage. Don't just be in a marriage. You're not sure whether you'll stay or leave. You know, whatever something comes, it shakes you. No, tell yourself by faith, I'm here to stay in this marriage. This is my marriage and I'm here to stay and I want to work and make it work. People who make marriages to work are people who have told themselves that I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here. People who have got that attitude, hey, more challenges, but the Lord will deliver us from them all. Amen.